Welcome back to the Health Longevity Secret Show with Dr. Robert Lufkin. How can we use genetic information to contribute to our health and longevity? Find out as we speak with Islam Mansour, co-founder and CEO of My Genome MD. He has a bachelor's in bioinformatics from the Technical University of Munich. Before we begin, I would like to mention that this show is separate from my teaching and research roles at the medical school which was, which which I am currently affiliated. It is part of my continuing effort to bring quality evidence-based information about health and longevity to the general public. Now, enjoy this interview with Islam Mansour. Islam Mansour, welcome to Health Longevity Secrets. Thanks very much for the invite. Great. Well, I'm so excited to hear about the uh, work you're doing. Uh, but before we dive into that, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you came to be interested in this uh, fascinating area. Well, uh, I think uh, I need to go back to my origin story. Um, uh, as you know, uh, we have talked about this before. Um, my I have a family history of uh, diabetes and cancer. My aunt died of cancer and my mother has diabetes. So I know the pain of such uh, chronic terrible disease, uh, especially when you see them, when you see people uh, are having painful luck because of them. So you, you develop empathy with them and you want to uh, prevent that from happening in the future for you. So. I tried a lot of solutions in the market and the problem is most of the or all of the solutions are providing you with average recommendations do exercise have a good diet uh, the healthy person stays for 60 years and do so so you need to do so but I want something that's specifically designed for me not for the average guy because i don't know maybe the average is better than me or maybe i am uh, i am above the average i don't know so as i am a pharmacist and uh, due to my background i knew that the answer is in genomics because everyone has a unique genetic profile and if you could apply that genetic profile into your daily life we could have personalized care plans and that means you could have care plans, not only based on average recommendations, but it takes into consideration your genetic profile, your genetic information, your family history, and all of these factors, not only your history factors or your clinical patterns. So for example, if we could apply that genetic information into mental health, we could detect mental disorders five to ten years advance and that's exciting and also if we could apply uh, genetic information into cardiovascular disease we could uh, <clears throat> we could allow people to have uh, a specific beta blockers or specific drugs that allow, that prevents them from having strokes in the future that means we are now in an era that we want people to prevent the disease in the first place from happening, not waiting until they have them. So that was very exciting and very fascinating for me and I wanted to dive in. And that was the start for my genome, but <laughs> that's, that's not everything, <laughs> so from happening, not everything goes according to plan. I find that 80% of primary care physicians are not comfortable or they lack genetic expertise. They leave it to genetic experts who are very low in number compared to the demand on them. So people would wait four months just for a session with a genetic counselor to understand their genetic profile. And yeah, from that point, I knew that I need to do something about that. So this, um, the, the, the problem is access to uh, expert genetic uh, counseling information. And, and from what you're saying, if I understand it correctly, uh, the individual would get a, a simple uh, genetic test, like a, a, a 
not a full gene sequencing, but just a genotyping test. One of the inexpensive ones from 23andMe or Ancestry.com or one of the many vendors out there, which mm -hmm. typically involves just sending in a saliva sample. Uh, and then they would get that information back and then you, you all would take it from there. Is that correct? That's correct. But also I'd like to add something very important. When you go to a genetic counselor first, you go to a genetic counselor when you don't have any idea about genomic medicine or what that is or what genetic testing is. Uh, so you go first to a genetic counselor to understand your genetic profile. That means you understand what's the role of genetics to your vitals, to your health vitals. What's the role of genetics compared to your medical history, to your family history? Genetic counseling is about connecting all of this information to create your story, as I would say. And after that, he would the genetic counselor recommend a, gen a genetic test for you. If you would like to take it or you wouldn't, that's your choice. The problem, the second problem after going through that process, after understanding your genetic profile, there's no solution available now in the market that would help you to monitor your health based on your genetic profile. What that means that I want to get a test from 23andMe or Ancestry. That's great. And I would get the information after doing my Slavia test. But the next step is I'd like to do something with this information. I'd like to apply this information into my daily life to stay healthy, to achieve longevity, not only to have this information to play with or to have as a a general knowledge we would like to tell people no this is very valuable information we could create very powerful insights that would help you all over your life and that's the role of my genome who, the, what are the types of insights uh, or could you give a few examples of uh, how uh, this type of uh, genomic counseling could uh, influence us in the in the lifestyle choices we take yeah, for sure. Um, so let's talk about pharmacogenomics. That's very exciting uh, part in my genome. Uh, there is a, um, a drug called the Plavix. Do you know Plavix? It's the second, uh, if I'm saying it right, it's the second uh, cell drug in the United States. The second um, most prescribed drug in the United States. Yes, uh, so, Since, sort of for coagulation, uh, for its coagulation exactly. effects, people with atrial exactly. fibrillation and other conditions like that may be using it. Okay. Uh, due, to, due to adverse drug reactions, around a billion dollar of its sales is wasted every year. Its sales is around $6.5 billion and around a billion dollar is wasted because 90% of drugs work only in 30% of people. So you can imagine how much are we wasting due to adverse drug reactions or uh, due to drugs that doesn't work in people. Um, according to last statistics, uh, in the United States annually, $136 billion is wasted. So with, with genetic testing as we do with pharmacogenomics, we have the ability and the chance to save around $25,000 per patient per year. So wow. we, we are shifting from say that all of people should take Plavix when they wanna have an anticoagulant to saying, no, some people would take Plavix, some people would, would take another alternative. And with that approach, we would save a lot of costs for the health system. And these costs would help us to stay, uh, to, would, would, let's say that if people live until 80 or 90, health system is not ready right now to help 
all of these people with the costs that we are wasting or the money we are wasting or money are, we are investing. But if we could save that money for the people who need it, we could achieve that goal. Well, that's, that's very significant with Plavix. How many other drugs uh, uh, are, there, are there genetic biomarkers for that influence their metabolism in that way? Um, according to FDA, there are right now more than 120 drugs in the United States that have uh, uh, genetic biomarkers. And uh, one of the most interesting insights about my genome that we have a vision in the future, if we have enough customer base, we could partner with pharma companies with our unique real-time data that's generated from our users, and that would mass produce such drugs. So we are expecting instead of 120 with my genome in five years, maybe we could have 300 or 400 drugs. Wow, that's, that's a, yeah. That's significant. So the, the, rather than doing full genome sequencing, which is more mm -hmm. expensive, it's getting more affordable all the time. Instead, yeah. it's possible to do the, the more economical genotyping where certain SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphisms are uh, detected within the sample. Um, for the standard yeah. consumer versions of uh, genotyping that, like we mentioned before, the 23andMe, the Ancestry.coms, et cetera, do, if I get those done, do they provide the SNPs that are necessary to identify the, the 120 uh, drug uh, uh, genetic effects uh, that you mentioned? Or will that require a new specialized type of uh, uh, genotyping that, that you'll be developing for your product? Uh, actually, right now, uh, there are available genetic tests for uh, uh, the genes that are uh, important for Plavix and uh, for the 120 tests. So there would be no problem if we would like to give a patient that genetic test. But the problem would be... Um, recommending the patient the right test mm. that's the problem right now there is no shortage of genetic tests in the market there is more than seventy-five thousand genetic tests in the market that's very huge is that the vendors or the actual snips they're testing is it um uh, i would say uh mix of both uh, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's a mix of both. But as you can see, there is a huge amount of genetic tests right now. And the problem is not many people know even about genomic medicine or the potential of it. Mm -hmm. So that's, what, uh, that's also a part of my genome. We would, like to we would like to educate people and we would educate users What's genomic medicine? What's the potential? Why it's very important? Why it's like um, there was a saying in our <clears throat> in our workshop that I've attended: uh, genetic counseling or genomic medicine is like air conditioning. When you don't have it, you would say, "Okay, I don't need it." But once you try it, you would never forget. <laughs> That's great, Willie. The, the 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 120. Uh, uh, genes that that influence the metabolism of drugs would be I, I'd love to get that on myself and certainly our audience uh, you know would would like who's interested in health and longevity would like to know if that uh, resveratrol they're taking or that metformin or the rapamycin or the NAD supplements are going to be metabolized normally or do they need a higher dose or lower dose yeah. so um, which which uh, testing companies uh, would currently provide those 120 uh, genes or is does that something that needs to be developed and put together as a service? Um, right now, the two most uh, famous companies for sure are 23andMe and Ancestry. Uh, such companies are providing uh, tests with uh, great reports and great results. We must say that. Um, there are also many new emerged startups that uh, are offering uh, genetic testing for 
users to try them uh, direct to, to consumer uh, genetic tests and they are also uh, cheap mm -hmm. uh, but uh, still the problem is or the challenge for all of uh, these genetic tests um, how could I know which genetic test should I take and how could I know if I even need a genetic test mm -hmm. so um, what you're saying then is the sort of the standard consumer ones 23andMe or Ancestry etc cetera, etc cetera, and there are many many other companies that do this but mm -hmm. but those standard tests are all we need and then we would just need to be able to interpret it correctly to understand those 120 uh, gene drug interactions and that's where yeah. uh, your your company my genome md may be able to to help provide that service is that right so yeah, i sure. just i would download my data from one of those vendors after i've had the the sequencing done and then send that off to you and and then you would perform that higher level analysis of uh all the interactions and things there for it um yeah exactly exactly and not only that we would also provide you with a healthcare plan personalized healthcare plans that that would tell you that how to uh integrate this information into daily life Mm -hmm. so that they would be usable uh, all over your life not only uh, having them on your phone so that you th you could use them track your plan and also you could have uh, a more empowered discussions with your healthcare providers so that uh, you could uh, talk with your general physician in a more details about you uh, not uh, waiting for uh, someone else or uh, because as I've said uh, in, uh, in the beginning, 80% of primary care physicians lack genetic expertise. So they wouldn't talk about it or they wouldn't use it. But right now, when you have the information in your hand, you could ask them, you could discuss more with them. Yeah, the, the 120 drug uh, gene interactions is, is very, uh, very compelling and uh, it's obviously useful information. What, what other um, lifestyle uh, modifications have, have you seen that a genetic profile can help people make more informed choices about their lifestyle? One of the most interesting parts for me uh, in genetic testing, and it's recently getting, uh, as I would say, as a hot topic, is mental health. Um, there is right now uh, clinics that offers the genetic uh, counseling for mental disorders that would help people just with uh, genetic counseling sessions have. Um, more holistic approach about their mental health which means that if we could add the family history part uh, to uh, the medical history of an individual and having a psychotherapy with them they could prevent uh, the mental disorders like anxiety depression or even alzheimer uh, five to ten years in advance and that's very interesting and uh, very exciting news that I was astonished first time I heard about it. And uh, I was wondering why this information or why these services are not available to everyone. Because 25% uh, of adults in the United States are affected or would be affected in the future with a mental health disorder. What type of disorder? Like, uh, uh, an anxiety, depression. Mental health, I see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mental health, like an anxiety or depression. And um, if we could prevent that in advance, or if we could have um, more uh, positive outcomes using genetic information about an individual, it's incredible. Yeah, that's certainly a, a, that's certainly a a valuable goal and. And for, for Alzheimer's disease, as you mentioned, the uh, APOE4 allele is, carries an increased risk uh, for the disease and that can be detected with uh, you know, these, these SNPs and all. Now for, for um, depression and other types of mental disorders, um, my understanding is that the association is, 
the association is not quite as strong. So that's the that's the challenge, I guess, that there's there's not a single allele necessarily, but it's more a polygenetic situation. But yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to, uh, just to say that in these situations for these mental health disorders, it's not a genetic test that decides on them, but uh, we could say that when we, when people understand the role of genetics, the role of gen genomic information uh, into getting such disorders, they make more informed decisions into their life instead of just saying to all people, ah, you know, uh, just relax, just uh, meditate uh, and you would be okay. No, we say to every person, maybe according to your history, you have a higher uh, risk of getting uh, that disorder other than other group of people. So maybe you would need a more special care. So we would give them more deep, personalized care plans mm -hmm. than other groups. Mm -hmm. The idea of stas uh, stratification, stratification <laughs> is very exciting. Uh, uh, that's, that's fascinating. And, and what, the, uh, what other types of recommendations can people, can people take from that uh, after they doing the testing and uh, getting the report from your company so they would, they would learn about um, uh, the mental health issues and the drug interactions is very, very valuable. Uh, any other things they, would, they could learn from this? Actually, what we would like to say that we help people first to know which the genetic test they need, whether they need a genetic test uh, for uh, gen uh, pharmacogenomics, for drugs, or whether they need a genetic test for mental health or for cardiovascular disease. That's the most interesting part. After that, after getting the test, they would get a personalized care plan based on the results they have. And that personalized care plan using our uh, mobile app, they would be able to track over time. I see. And that's the very interesting part here. I see. I see. And and um, are you uh, are you looking any any in addition to the specific disease markers for cardiovascular disease or dementia or mental health issues or pharmaco uh, gene interactions? Are you um, tracking any longevity uh, any longevity type genes or any longevity uh, uh, patterns uh, for sure we are we are working on that currently uh, we um, are still in beta phase so we are concentrating on the available genetic tests that are most widely used and most widely asked for um, uh, but for sure, we are working in developing um, more personalized care plans based uh, on the longevity um, genes, uh, specific genes that's related to longevity, for sure. Yeah. But we are still saying that if you follow the personalized care plans of my genome, if you get a genetic test and get a genetic counseling session and you have done all of that, you are on the right track for longevity than someone who just follow the average recommendations. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, decreasing your risk of dementia, heart disease, cancer, uh, stroke. Yeah, sure. If you diminish all those, then longevity is bound to go up. Um, so in addition to mental health and, and drug interactions and, and um, cardiovascular disease, are there any other large uh, disease categories that you target with your counseling? Uh, for sure, the genetic counseling has um, many applications right now. Uh, one of the most interesting uh, would be in pediatrics uh, for children and also uh, for nutrition. And for nutrition, that's getting uh, uh, expanding uh, month over month. We have a lot of companies right now that offers uh, genetic tests that would help you to find the perfect diet based on your genes, uh, mm -hmm. to find the, the optimal supplements mm -hmm. 
-hmm. based on your genetic profile. And that's a very interesting part that we would like to expand into also. We would like to help people to have the perfect diet for preventing uh, specific diseases based on their genetic profile. Mm -hmm. And not also that, we would like to help them to track the care plan that the, we they would get from us and uh, with that we would help them to prevent diseases from happening and even if a disease appears they would uh, they would know and they would talk with their doctors uh, as soon as possible mm. yeah that's that's very very interesting um in addition to the the genotyping um people Experts have famously used the analogy that the genetics, uh, the genome is like the hardware. And now there's this growing interest in the uh, epigenetic modification of the, of the DNA uh -huh. through uh -huh. DNA methylation or histone modification or, or RNA. Um, are, you, uh, are you currently looking at any uh, epigenetic factors or are, are you planning to move into that field or mainly focusing on the, the primary DNA uh, for now? For now, we are currently focusing on primary DNA for sure. Uh, but the most interesting part about epigenetic that we provide for people, we always say to some people came to us and uh, they are hesitant to take a genetic test. I mean, during our interviews, our product uh, um, validation phase uh, we spoke with uh, so many customers and uh, some people were very interesting and signed up with us to try the app and uh, they said they will get a genetic test but some people said okay i would use the the app but i wouldn't get a genetic test because if i get a genetic test and it had um, it, uh, negative results or to say that i would have uh, cancer and 10 or 20 years, I would be worried if I know that. And uh, maybe uh, I would be worse after knowing that. But we tell people based on epigenetics, if you follow some instructions, if you follow some uh, care guidelines that's specifically designed for you, you could prevent a specific gene from firing gene expression. <laughs> or you could prevent a specific gene from expressing itself. And by that, you would prevent that disease from happening. So you would be in a much better place than other uh, individual who doesn't even know which gene he has. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good point. As, as someone uh, once said, I think that the, our, our DNA is like the, the the hand we were dealt in a game of cards, mm -hmm. but then our lifestyle is how we choose to play that hand and it can have very di different outcomes. Like you say that uh, um, the, the gene expression and, and the, the quote firing of the gene can be controlled by epigenetic modification yeah. through our lifestyle and, and, yeah, and other exactly. factors. Exactly, exactly. One issue always comes up uh, with some of my patients and others about uh, privacy with uh, getting genetic testing. People are afraid that they, um, you know, that it is very revealing. It's it's a tremendous amount of information, even with genotyping. And uh, I, I know uh, one patient said that uh, he used a an assumed name, um, a made up name when he sent his into the consumer testing uh, lab. Mm -hmm. But I guess the point is it doesn't matter if you use your real name or your real address because the information uniquely identifies you whether, whether they know your name or not. Yeah, it's exactly. like sending a photo of yourself with a different name. The photo is the information. Um, any, any thoughts on that and, and privacy? Um, I, I would speak about ourselves. In my genome, we are developing a, a HIPAA, HIPAA compliant platform. In the United States, there are uh, many guidelines and many rules regarding digital health data. Uh, I would like to 
say to audience that really for any digital health startup or digital health company to provide a service in this field, we have so many challenges and regulations rather than any other type of startups. Yeah. Because of HIPAA regulations, FDA, um, uh, many uh, regulations from governments that vary from country to country. So it's very hard right now to say, uh, to launch a digital health startup and uh, leak patient information that would be, um, I would say it would destroy a company. Sure, in, sure. In no, in no time. And that's why we are focusing right now to make our uh, platform very, very secure, HIPAA compliant. We are applying for your accreditation, uh, accreditation, which is like the golden star for data uh, security. Yeah. It would yeah. cost us a lot of money and a lot of time, but uh, that's uh, what we need to guarantee the data privacy of our patients. Yeah, so to be clear, the genetic uh, information would be protected by HIPAA in the United States or whatever uh, regulations are in effect in the country that, that, that our audience is in that will protect that information as if it were more medical information. Exactly, exactly. And I understand um, that currently you are looking for uh, beta users for your product to test it at no charge. Is that correct? For sure. We are very happy and we welcome anyone who would like to use my genome, who would like uh, to send us any questions about our app. We are very excited about getting any piece of feedback because we are developing our product based on the feedback of our customers. Great. We'll, we'll include information in the show notes on uh, how, to, uh, how to get to you. And also for uh, people that are listening, can you tell us the website they should go to to find that information? Uh, for sure. Anyone could uh, go to our website, www.mygenome.com. And uh, there is a form uh, for requesting a demo. Or, and uh, if you fill the form and send it to us, we would send our mobile, uh, our web app for you. We are currently, uh, we have finished our alpha version and we are currently in developing our beta and we are looking for beta testers. Great, great. Hopefully, yeah, that's, uh, that sounds interesting. Now, with, with all your information and knowledge about pharmacology and, and genetics and, and your interest in health and, and longevity, it's always fun to ask our experts, uh, what, what does your lifestyle look like? What, what choices have you made um, in your life about uh, exercise, diet, uh, sleep, supplements that you feel uh, are important for for health and longevity okay um i would have a lot of things to say but i would say that the most important factor and very underrated right now is our brain our mental health uh, i would say that uh, first and foremost, take care uh, of your mental health. Mental, if you have any mental health issue, if you have uh, an anxiety or depression, I wouldn't imagine that the person affected by such disorders would make uh, rational decisions about the rest of uh, his life. I mean, if I am depressed, it's very hard to quit smoking. If I'm depressed, it's very hard to say to me, uh, let's go uh, and run for 30 minutes every morning. So first and foremost, uh, mental health. Uh, if you need to go to a, a consultant or a psychiatrist, it's worth it. Yeah. And uh, there is no, there's no shame on it. I mean, um the yeah, certainly the yeah bad, yeah the bad part about mental health is that it still has a shame to go to a therapist or go to a psychiatrist but i would say um 
the from my experience the influence of uh, mental health is huge i <clears throat> i myself uh, was depressed for some time i can remember and uh, during that time it was around for around uh, three months i got weight i didn't um, i didn't work out like i used to i didn't uh, well uh, i mean mostly i would uh, walk uh, walk in the morning for an hour but um, during that time i didn't do all of that i wanted to sleep and yeah it's very bad so anyone please take care of your mental health that's number one priority yeah that's a good a good principle if i could just interject here we we this program is about lifestyle and health and longevity and and these are very important foundational things to do but i have to I have to say wearing my my hat for conventional medicine if mm -hmm. If one of the diseases arises where it's a mental health disease or it's cancer or it's a heart attack or a stroke or dementia, these should be treated with the primary conventional uh, conventional medicine treatments. We, you know, lifestyle can be added on, but there are specific treatments for cancer or, or for mental health. And it's important to address these um, in addition to all the lifestyle things that we do. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, I would say that mental health need to be more aware about because many people are really anxiety and depressed and they don't know. They don't even realize that uh, they have uh, such disorders and uh, they need to be addressed. So number one, I would like to speak about mental health. And for sure, after that comes uh, the supplements your diet, what you eat, <laughs> uh, there's a saying, uh, what you eat uh, tells me more about who you are. So um, what sort of would... diet do you have? Or do you have any preferences with uh, fat or carbohydrates or fasting, uh, that, that sort of thing? Um, actually, for me myself, uh, I would uh, decrease the amount of uh, sugar intake and the amount of uh, fats for sure uh, but uh, there is a problem that if someone gets uh, lower carbohydrates that, that uh, lower than he needs what he needs then this would be very bad i mean yeah for sure you can decrease your carbohydrates but uh, not for an amount that would uh, help you not to have energy because carbohydrates is the most powerful source of energy so yeah many people don't take sugar but uh, it's very important to have it in a moderate level sugar yeah, that the, the low carb advocates just sort of putting in the other side, uh, they, they're, they're, they claim that there's a, energy can be derived from ketones and uh, there's like even now Olympic athletes and all that are running in, in ketosis and performing on that level. So there is a, a contrary opinion about that, that people can exist with uh, very low carb uh, consumption and mm -hmm. and even the brain can run on ketones there but uh, but that's that's a topic for another discussion but yeah, yeah, please, yeah for sure please go on and what about supplements I understand you take a, a huge array of supplements uh, <laughs> what are your choices and why <laughs> uh, actually for supplements uh, for me I would take uh, supplements that are orga organic coming uh, organically resource that's my priority and uh, I would take also supplements that uh, has a lot of magnesium for sure a lot of potassium and um, um, right now I take also uh, some uh, uh sodium sodium potassium magnesium that's the ones that come to my mind because uh, for potassium uh, that's very important uh, the potassium is in uh, like in bananas and uh, potassium gives you that uh, 
uh, really feeling no and uh, i like to take it because it really makes me happy for some reason when i take uh, a lot of it and uh, magnesium uh, also uh, we don't uh, normally eat food that that's rich in magnesium normally in our life so yeah and um, for sodium sodium is very important for as an electrolyte and uh, for anyone who is doing uh, activity or um, any type of exercise it's very important to take uh, an a moderate amount of uh, of sodium for sure. Speaking of exercise, you mentioned you uh, normally go on a walk in yeah, the morning. Yeah. Is there any other exercise regimen you do? Um, go on a walk. Sometimes uh, I I rain. I like to rain uh, to run. Uh, there's a park near to me. I like to run in the nature. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, running and walking. Sometimes I ride a bike, but um, not for a long time. But running and walking, yeah, these are most important. Taking su the right supplements. Um, also, sleeping for a uh, moderate amount of time, eight uh, to nine hours hmm. every night. <laughs> uh -huh. I know that many people don't sleep that much, but um, when I try to sleep for less than eight hours, I feel that I have a brain fog or I I don't do well on the next day. So it's not worth it for me. Uh -huh. Do you use any devices uh, like uh, continuous glucose monitors or ketone monitors or sleep uh, heart rate variability? Any any tools like that that help you actually right now i don't have one but i'd like to try uh, um, a sleep monitoring one in the future because yeah i had uh, some issues with sleeping in the past and i'd like to monitor it i even used some uh, apps on uh, the mobile and it was very interesting it gives you some interesting insights about uh, sleeping and the patterns and uh, some graphs and I liked it. Actually, there are many, uh, many apps right now uh, that you could use on your phone that are very interesting and uh, <clears throat> very helpful for longevity. Um, Which your favorite uh, ones? Uh, for me, I use, uh, I use I use Headspace for sure for meditation i like i'm one of the supporters of headspace um i tried it and i liked it uh there's also an app called the uh, youper i like the youper uh what does youper do uh youper is uh, a chatbot for um for mental uh for mental health it's uh -huh. like having uh uh your therapist but on your mobile I liked it very much. Youper, and there is one called the Babylon Health. Uh, I don't know if it's famous, but Babylon Health uh, is doing great work. Also, they are com using a chatbot or combining AI with the medical information to give you in holistic insights about oh. you. So I like it very much. Those are yeah. great. We'll link to those in the show notes, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd like everyone to try it. And there, there are, these are some examples. I mean, uh, there are many other apps also that people can try. But I, what I would say that these apps are uh, using technology and uh, I would suggest anyone to, to get use of uh, the available uh, artificial intelligence technologies that are used right now to improve longevity because I don't think that we could achieve the longevity mission without uh, getting without using all of the technologies that we have available right now in our hands. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think the most powerful technology will be for longevity? Um, big data and uh, artificial intelligence, because longevity is about uh, collecting data and creating patterns about how could we help people to stay 80 to or 90 years with good health in good shape. So right now we don't have this available information. If we have this available information and we could analyze it and we could scale it around the wallet, I think we could achieve the longevity. Yes, that's, that's a, a great thought. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be seeing more and more people involved in that space and working to get the data together and everything. So yeah, I- for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and and things are ha things are changing so fast in this space. It's amazing the developments that you you're doing with your company and so many other companies Thanks also in the longevity space. It's a very exciting time to that to to, to be here. But uh, Islam, I want to thank you so much for for coming on our program. We really appreciate it and sharing your knowledge. And we wish you the the best of luck with your product. And hopefully, some of our audience will uh, join you in the beta phase. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. And uh, and uh, we're looking forward to great things. Thanks very much for your time. I hope I have said uh, something or two that were useful for the audience. And uh, if anyone excited for my genome or if anyone wants to ask me anything uh, in this space, uh, I'm available. Uh, my email, I would give it to you. And um, now go yeah. ahead, tell them your email right now if you'd like, and we'll put it in the contacts also in the show notes. Yeah, it's islam.mansoor at mygenome.com. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, we hope to talk again soon. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We'll talk again soon. This is for general information and educational purposes only. And it's not intended to constitute or substitute for medical advice or counseling. The practice of medicine or the provision of health care, diagnosis or treatment, or the creation of a phys physician, patient or clinical relationship. The use of this information is at their own, uh, own user's risk. If you find this to be on the value, please hit that like button to subscribe to support the work that we do on this channel. And we take the, your suggestions and advice very seriously, so please let us know what you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time.